Hi guys and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Biliana and I write mainly about the gender equality and you can check out my columns on my website clickme.com. I'm gonna leave you the link here below in the description of this video as well as the links for my Facebook page and the Instagram account where I put new things and news from the feminist world every single day. In this video you will learn about the history of abortion, where it is banned, where it is allowed, I will give you some general numbers, so stay tuned. Abortion has been a controversial subject in many societies throughout the history based on moral, ethical, religious and political grounds. Today abortion is banned in many countries throughout the world or very very restricted. However, the World Health Organization shows us today that there is almost the same number of abortions performed in the countries where it's legal and in the countries where it's not. Also according to the World Health Organization, there are less abortions performed throughout the world because of the larger access to the contraceptives. Since ancient times abortions were performed, we have the proofs of an abortion being performed in China 2700 BC, uh, in ancient Egypt 1550 BC as well, or in Roman Empire in the year of 200. For that matter, a number of different methods have been used. For example, women would take different plants, they would use force, uh, they would hurt themselves only in order to get an abortion. In Europe, women would swallow lead, they would also drink bleach, or they would just take different poisonous uh, herbs in order to terminate their unwanted pregnancy. This only shows us that women that want to get an abortion will find a way to do so. Christianity has been pretty divided about what they think about abortion. So many would think that the abortion is not a murder until the woman actually feels the fetus inside of her. That period when she feels, that moment when she feels the fetus is um, thought as a moment when the soul enters the womb of the woman and that's where actually the child is born. The first time that Christianity actually really officially banned the abortion was at the end of the 16th century by the Pope Sixtus V. However, only three years later his successor reversed his decision and the abortion was allowed again. In North America and Europe, safe and advanced techniques of abortion were started in the 17th century. However, they were not widely performed nor widely spread because many of the physicians and many of the doctors that were supposed to perform them were extremely conservative. Physicians and doctors would say that the abortion is not safe enough and that there are more women dead to the abortion than to the birth, childbirth, uh, which uh, many historians say is not true because there were a lot of abortions performed in the 19th century with the same techniques and if they were performed in the hygienic uh, conditions by midwives, by someone that knows at least something about it, women would not die and officially in the 1930s it becomes safer to get an abortion than uh, to have a childbirth. All the laws and all the restrictions and rules on the abortion were actually uh, taken in the 20th century. So in the 20th century we have two different poles. We have the, the anti-abortion or pro-life uh, movements and then on the other hand we have pro-choice uh, movements. Pro-life uh, movements obviously uh, are the ones that want to ban completely the abortion and inside of these groups we have uh, the church, we have uh, the conservative parties, we have the right-wing uh, politicians and we have physicians that think that the abortion is a murder. On the other hand, we have the pro-choice movements that are for choice. So, here are some numbers. 
Soviet Russia allowed the abortion in 1920, Iceland in 1935, Sweden in 1938. Then the Nazi Germany also allowed abortion in 1935, but under certain circumstances. This is where we come to the saying personal is political because the Nazi Germany actually allowed all other women but the ones of pure German identity to get an abortion so only the women that would give birth to a child that's completely German uh, could not have an abortion all other women could there is another very interesting thing about Soviet Union and Russia. In the 20s, the abortion was allowed and they thought, okay, we're gonna allow it, but in a communist country, in any case, abortion will not exist because uh, the whole community takes care of the child. Everybody's gonna have equal opportunities. Everybody's gonna have uh, equal rights, equal salaries. So um, women will still want to have a child uh, because we're all gonna take care of it. Hmm kind of sounds good in theory, but in real life doesn't really work. It was banned again in 1935-36 because Russia lost a lot of people during the previous wars and uh, Stalin wanted to um, increase the population in Russia. Yugoslavia, where I was born, legalized the abortion in 1952 under certain conditions and then it was one of the first countries that actually got the abortion into its constitutional law in 76. Japan uh, legalized abortion in 1948, which is pretty wild because it was the period right after the Second World War and Japan lost a lot of people in it. Funny story about France. At the beginning of the 70s, um, there was an act that was signed by 343 salopes, as they would say in French, uh, which basically means a whore. Um, it was signed by uh, 343 women that were public figures saying, hello, I have had an abortion, so legalize it because it doesn't make sense for it to stay illegal since we're all having abortions. So it was finally legalized in 75. Now, wait for it. The Netherlands, 1980, and Belgium, what do you think? 1990, 1990, I'm gonna repeat that. Two countries that have the most restrictive rules and laws on abortion today in Europe are Poland and Malta. Malta, Malta. Malta does not even allow abortion when the woman's life is in danger. So the woman's body is completely controlled by the circumstances of life. It is uh, discussed in the parliament, uh, in the political parties, and it's mainly discussed among men. So today abortion, if the woman's life is in danger, is allowed in 98% of the countries throughout the world. However, it is allowed if there is a fetal impairment only in 61% of the countries throughout the world. Can you imagine? Only in 61. Also in 61% of the countries, if a woman gets pregnant because of a rape or an incest only in 61 percent of the countries today officially uh, only 34 percent of the countries in the whole world allow abortion because a woman wants to have an abortion something that's very important for us to understand is that women's rights are set aside in the times of crisis. We're living a huge crisis at the moment. So there is this pandemic. We don't know when it's gonna end, how it's gonna end. Uh, we don't see the end of the tunnel. This pandemic uh, will be followed by a harsh economical crisis that has already started for many people that stayed without their jobs. However, it's probably gonna be even worse. Well, in the moments of great crisis, such as 
poverty, unemployment, or just huge transitions. Uh, people tend to stick to something that they know. So these are the times when people stick to tradition and where the nationalism rises. These are also the times when the women's rights are questioned, where everything that women have been fighting for is not only questioned, but also banned again. You can see this situation in Poland at the moment. Banning abortions does not does not prevent women from having one. Banning abortions only increases the number of illegal abortions and mortality of women. I would like to invite all governments and politicians to stop messing with our wombs and to rather focus on the sex education in schools on having laws to ban the pink tax, for example, or to have free of charge contraceptives, maybe to invest in men's contraceptives. Hmm, how about that? How about gender equality in the 21st century? Huh? How about that? There's a lot to think about. There are a lot of other things that you can do instead of banning the abortion. But for now, my body, my choice.